Good afternoon, everyone. We call today's uh, January 4th, 2022, uh, 3 o'clock pre agenda meeting in order. I'd like to welcome everyone. Madam Clerk, uh, all uh, five commissioners are in attendance. Our county finance director, county attorney, and county manager. I would uh, like to remind everyone to please silence their mobile devices. And, and when you come up to speak, please activate the uh, microphone before speaking for recording purposes. Because if you don't, then we can't hear you on the YouTube video. So uh, please keep that in mind. Um, the first, the second item of uh, uh, business is the approval of the agenda. Uh, approval of the agenda. Um, uh, there is an amendment to the agenda. You'll see item number two under presentations is going to be moved to the February uh, meeting. So um, I'm looking for approval of the agenda as amended, and we're moving the MMFP presentation to the February agenda. So moved, Thank you. All those in favor of the motion, state by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next item of business is presentations um, and animal services, pet of the month. This will be presented by Caitlin Sotomayor, our Animal Services Director. How are you today? I'm doing well. How about you guys? Wonderful. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, we will be presenting a cat and a dog as our January Pet of the Month for 2022. Um, this is to help promote adoptions through our Animal Services Center. And if you guys have any questions, I can answer those. Any questions, comments for Caitlin? Absolutely. I keep hearing good things. Y'all are doing a wonderful job down there. So thank y'all so much. <laughs> and without objection, uh, gentlemen, this item will remain on the agenda. Moving on to item number four, scheduled public hearings. We have none today. So we'll move on to uh, our consent agenda items under item five. Uh, this will be presented by Madam Clerk, appointment to the CPCFP team. Um, Ms. Kay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. This is a request to appoint Damon Patton to the Child Protection Child Fatality Prevention Team, seat number seven, which is an at-large seat, to complete the remainder of a term ending April 30th, 2024. I would also like to call your attention um, to page 13 of the agenda packet. Daniel Lasher and I have developed a new online boards and committee application. It's much like community development's online application, except we don't have the little box code, the QR code, but we do have a new online application to make it easier for people to apply online to serve on a board and committee. Just wanted to make you aware of that. Looks good. Thank you so much. Any, any questions, comments? Ms. Kay? Without objection, then this item will remain on the consent agenda. Moving on to item number two. Appointments to the Local Emergency Planning Committee, and that will be presented by Mike Willis. He's not here, Mr. Chairman. Maybe he got called away on emergency. I'd be happy to take that item. Okay, please do, Madam Clerk. <clears throat> Mike will be forever in my debt. <laughs> This is a request to reappoint Pete Mentor to seat number one, Ronnie Rector to seat number seven, um, Mr. Carswell to seat number eight, Charles Conley seat number 10, Spring Williams Bird to seat number 13, and Jeffrey McDaniel to seat number 15 to the Burke County Local Emergency Planning Committee for three year terms ending January 31st, 2025. It is also a request to remove Emily Petit's name from the roster and thank her for her service to the community. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Any questions, comments? If none, without objection, uh, this item will remain on the consent agenda. We'll move on to item number three, uh, resolution to adopt Burke County Emergency Op Operations Plan. Um, are you filling in with that as well? I'll give it a shot, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, per the North Carolina Department of Public Safety Division of Emergency Management funding guidelines, the County Emergency Operations and All Hazards Plan must be reviewed on an annual basis with any revisions or updates noted and approved. 
At each five-year interval, a comprehensive assessment of the plan is conducted. During the 2020 budget year, we had a company <coughs> review and uh, update the county's plan. This plan was updated to meet the current FEMA Comprehensive Preparedness Guide, CPG 101 version 2, and the requested action is to adopt resolution number 2022-01, approving the plan, and um, Mr. Willis can take it from there if you have any questions. Mike, how are you today? Good, sir. How are you? Good. Any additional information you would like to add to? Okay, any questions or comments uh, for Mike? Excuse me. I do not have a question, but a comment. That's a lot of information to absorb and review. And looking at all that stuff, it seems like we're in very good shape. And I guess the best thing we could do is never have an emergency so you'd have to use it so no, that would be nice it yes, sure would. but it was impressive didn't it? very well organized i appreciate it thank you sir thank you commissioner taylor any other questions or comments i will just say um kay i, I would like to thank our clerk for uh, i wanted a hard copy for this of this so anybody that can see this it's pretty it is a very comprehensive plan so uh, great work i will say well there's no objection in this item will remain on the consent agenda and i will remind everyone the full plan is posted uh, where you can get the electronic agenda if you would like so thank you thank you, thank you mike moving on to item number five funding for security fence for 2354 us 70 in colony springs this will be presented by our general service director mark delahunt mark how are you today i'm, I'm good happy new year to you happy new year to you Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. I'm before you this afternoon to request funds to construct a security fence around the recently acquired building in Conley Springs. The building I'm referring to is 100 foot by 200 and 40 foot tall at the peak. There's an additional 100 foot by 50 foot building connected to one side. This makes for a total combined, or for a combined total of 25,000 square feet under roof. The door openings to this building are 25 foot wide 20 foot tall making it easily accessible some of the water sewer equipment that could be stored here includes a caterpillar skid steer a Kubota mini excavator a Kubota backhoe two bush hogs and an Ingersoll ran air compressor that is actually mounted on a trailer the water sewer department also has a large volume of repair materials including 20 foot lengths of PVC pipe that if exposed to the elements over time become brittle and unusable I've also spoken with the recreation director who said that if this building had been, would be made secure, he would also like to relocate some of his equipment he used to maintain Reek Park from its current location at the landfill. He stated this would save him a lot of staff time from having to haul his mowers up and down or up from all the way at the landfill. And I actually took a look at, a look at this and uh, it uh, would reduce the back and forth miles by uh, 32 miles each day. So, um, I've also spoken with the sheriff's office who said they might be able to relocate some of their surplus vehicles while they wait to be put on gov deals to this property if it had been made secure. I've also been told by some of the sheriff's deputies that the property has a history of criminal activity. In fact, in the past three years, they've had 61 calls to this property. I believe that once we can start using this property and have some county employee traffic on a regular basis, that a more, majority of that can be curbed. Now, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Mark. Any any questions, comments? Mr. Chairman, I understand this to include both parts. So you're actually asking for forty around forty six, forty seven thousand dollars total. Uh, originally, I uh, looked at just a six foot, foot high fence, and after thinking about it more, it's uh, that's a fence someone could probably get over without uh, the wire on top. So I had included that as an option, the uh, spiral uh, barbed wire on top. The, uh, is this the standard we have at all the other landfills? 
at the other property it, it's a standard size fence for this purpose for security and keep people out of there and we do have money available that we don't have to go into our fund no i believe this would uh, have to be appropriated out of the um, general fund if i'm not mistaken is that correct Mark? funds for this uh, there are not funds available in the current budget it will have to come from retained earnings in water sewer or general fund fund balance if you choose to proceed so which are we taking it out of I, I would hope there would be funds available in the water sewer fund I believe there are yeah that's all I have sir thank you thank you mr. Taylor any other questions or comments mark Mark, did you consider a, a seven foot fence you think six foot is enough? I did not get that price but uh, you know I, I could get some options available for you if uh, this is a direction you're interested in going I'd be more than happy to look at that as well I'm, I'm fine with the secure defense now I think it needs it I, I'm good with the razor wire as well we typically use a little bit taller fence than that but Any other questions, comments? If not, without objection, this item will remain on the consent agenda. <laughs> Mr. Thank Chairman, um, I assume that you guys want it on with the um, the first option, and I'll take the uh, the second option off, which did not have the razor wire on top. So yes, the one with the razor ribbon. Correct. Yes, the first option. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Moving on to item number five, OSHA vaccination or testing mandate presented by Rhonda Lee, our HR director. <clears throat> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. This has been a moving target, uh, what I'm going to present. So it, it still continues to be a moving target as, as we proceed. But I'll go ahead and start here and kind of go over the summary of information. But on November the 5th, of 2021, the U.S. Occupation, uh, Occupational Safety and Health Administration released an emergency temporary standard. They actually have released several over the past few months. There was one for healthcare workers, and that is separate from this one. Um, but this is one for employers that um, employ 100 or more employees. So that's what this emergency temporary standard is. And it was placed on hold uh, through the federal courts and then it was released recently. I think it was December the 17th that it was released uh, and now it's back on track. Um, just so you guys understand, we are not, Burke County government is not under the federal OSHA standard. We are under the North Carolina Department of Labor jurisdiction. And so far, the North Carolina Department of Labor has not adopted this standard at this time, but they are required to, to keep their own state plan within a period of, I think, 30 days after the adoption of the policy from the federal level. So right now, as I said earlier, this is a moving target. Um, this standard has now gone to the Supreme Court, which they will be hearing uh, oral arguments this Friday, the, the 7th of January. And so we're kind of on hold at this time. But what we're bringing before you guys is basically the information that is a requirement from the federal standard. And what that entails and, and what we have undertaken so far is that we as employers have to get the vaccination status of all of our employees. And we started that effort, it was the beginning of last week. Uh, it was on Tuesday when we got back from the Christmas holiday. And so, so far through this process, we have received uh, out of about 718 employees, we've received around 372 responses so far. And so we're, we're underway of trying to meet that requirement for the federal standard, which they had a deadline that that had to be in place by January the 10th, which is Monday. And so we're, we're well underway with that. But the other component on the federal standard was that the employers had to adopt 
one of two policies. One policy would be either the employer is mandating the vaccination and the only way the, the employee would have a way to be exempted from that is if they came forward with a medical request for medical exemption or request for a religious exemption that we would have to go through a process that's through the ADA uh, to accommodate or not accommodate those requests for accommodations. So that's, we've got two templates in here for you guys to, to understand which of the two, if this all you know follows through and is in place, what we'll have to do. Uh, the first is that policy. There's a, a draft template of that policy where it's mandated. The second one is either the, the employee is vaccinated or they're tested on a weekly basis. And so that we've got to decide if this all comes to, you know, into play, which policy that the commissioners want to proceed with and um, who's going to pay for the testing. So that I know you guys have probably heard a lot of this in the news, um, but this is something that we're trying to stay ahead of the curve to make sure that we're in compliance because we certainly don't want to receive any fines from OSHA. So if, I'll be glad to attempt to take any questions that you may have on this at this time. Thank you, Ron. Mm -hmm. Any questions and comments? Probably, probably Ms. several. Mr. Chair, let me ask one question. Sure. Fines from federal or fines from state DOL? That would be because we fall under the North Carolina Department of Labor. Once they adopt it, if it clears the Supreme Court, we would be under the North Carolina Department of Labor in those fines, not federal. But as of right now, we are still floating. There's nothing been decided. Yeah, we, we look every day at the NC Department of Labor website, and they have a little blurb on there that said that, you know, when they adopt this, that they will let us know. But okay. we have not got, we've not received any guidance on that at all. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. Ms. Lee, uh, go over that again. I heard part of it, but I didn't get all of it written down. Total employees now are what? Right now, it's a moving target, but right now it's 719. 719. And that's full-time and part-time. This applies to both full-time and part-time employees. Percentage of those that have been vaccinated? Of the information that we have so far, we've, we've only received 372 <coughs> by the time I walked over here responses. And of that, about 33% of those are not vaccinated. Um, do, do you have a feeling or uh, of how many will not want to be vaccinated? Well, <laughs> if, if it plays out, if it stays at 33% where we are right now, that's going to be somewhere between 260 to 300 employees um, that we may be looking at that would not be vaccinated. My math might not be right on that, but it's in that ballpark. Well, I read, I read your presentation of it a couple of times. I also noted that on your deadlines, uh, mm -hmm. what page is that, 117, I guess, um, the deadline is January the 7th. Do you feel like you're gonna get response that fast? to get all those answers in? We're working very hard um, to get them in. In fact, we're tracking it and we're letting the department heads know the, of the people that we have not received a response from so far. Now, what you're looking at, Commissioner Taylor, is a template. That is a template, and those dates are based off of the federal dates. That at this time, um, what we're being told by the school of government is that those dates will not apply to us because once and if the North Carolina Department of Labor adopts it, then they'll have their own dates for implementation. Well, we're not going to pass your, <laughs> uh, your item until two weeks from today. So does that create a problem? And is there a grace period for those who want to be but just didn't know about it or it was too short a notice etc cetera, etc cetera. well 
from what the school of government is saying, they're saying that they think, it's all a lot of speculation, that they think that the Department of Labor, North Carolina Department of Labor, will have a period for implementation that goes beyond the federal date. Um, the federal dates were that is that we had to have the vaccination status all by January the 10th, and then if we chose to start the testing, that had to be in place on February the 9th. So I'm hoping that the North Carolina Department of Labor gives us that grace period. And um, my thought is, is if we don't know anything by your next meeting, that this item can be removed until we have further information. Well, I've had my three shots, so including the booster. But if I want to be stubborn and don't want to do it, what happens to me as an employer? Excuse me, employee. Well, that depends on which policies the county goes with of one of these two. Um, it depends on if 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 it's going to be a strong vaccination mandate then if the employee does not comply and they do not ask and receive an exemption for medical or religious purposes, then that person would not be employed. That's that policy. The other policy would be if the employee is not vaccinated, then they would go into have, having to be tested on a weekly basis every seven days. And then they would have to produce a negative COVID test. So, for, for us to 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 keep track of we have to keep track of all this too so there is a possibility if you don't take your shot you would be relieved of employment and it's depending on which policy the county adopts yeah. yes i understand that yes that's all i have mr chairman thank you very much welcome thank you commissioner taylor any other questions um one thing Rhonda. um so what you're looking for is guidance today on whether it's going to be option A or option B. Yes. And then this can be removed if it, if we do not have any more information at, at a later date. Yes. Oh, yeah. Mr. Chairman, one of the things that I understand is they say we need to make a good faith effort. Yes. Uh, so even if there's some issues there, I mean, we all know what, what should look like a good good faith effort. And I think Rhonda and myself are going to be looking at this closely in the next few days and uh, would have a recommendation for the, the policy, more likely the B policy. Um, again, two weeks from today, the Supreme Court may come out and strike all this down and it's over with. But until that's over with, we have to proceed to meet what the initial deadlines are, at least to make a good faith effort. And that's, that's all we're going to try to do. So we're looking just for, you're just looking for some guidance. Is it um, um, the gentleman's opinion that option B that has more flexibility is more palatable? And that would be the option that y'all are comfortable with? Commissioner Taylor, Commissioner Aplin? I'm comfortable. Or more palatable than option A? <laughs> uh, Personally, it's going to pass. But that's just my feeling. We're just trying to give them some, just trying to move the football at this point, and that that's been so. By giving them that guidance, it sounds to me, unless I hear something different, then um, we'll move forward with option B at this point. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Without objection.
say an X. Then you write the second letter. And we did exactly what they said. Uh, and we were not required to do that because uh, we're not within the Freedom of Information Act. But that's the kind of information that we've gotten from this group of people because that's all they do. Uh, they've got um, services, contract services. Uh, I don't know how broad, but I know a lot of sheriff's offices that even have attorneys, full-time attorneys, hire these people to provide them with immediate information 24-7. Um, I, I know that um, the contract has been changed a couple times. We're okay with doing whatever the commissioners wants to do. If you want to do physical year, calendar year, uh, get us caught up and start on the calendar year, we're fine with whatever the commissioners want to do. But we really want to move forward with this uh, contract because it's been very beneficial to the sheriff's office and then thus far uh, for the citizens of the county. Thank you, Sheriff. Questions, comments? Yes, Sheriff Wisnett, uh, we have not had this service since September, is that correct? Correct. Uh, was there a reason it was not included in the 2020? Yeah, what happened was uh, when the contract was submitted, was we started in September, I forgot, 15, 16, 17, something like that. When we got the bill to pay the contracted price, it was uh, on automatic renewal. But we've learned that uh, the commissioners apparently don't use automatic renewal, but we assumed that it was automatic renewal. And so we were just gonna pay it again because it's actually funds coming out of the uh, drug fund. Uh, they're really not the county's fund per se. That's the funds that we have seized in drug raids, the cash and so forth. We put that into uh, a particular account. That's how we've been funding it. Uh, I would love for the county to fund it, but uh, we've been funding that way, assuming that it would just automatically renew. We learned that that was not uh, the practice that the commissioners wanted to do. So then we started uh, with the contract that's before you today. And like I say, it's been modified several times. Personally, I don't know where we're at now, if it's on calendar year or or physical year, but the we'll, we'll do. January 18th January 7th. So, okay. So we'll do whatever the commissioners want to do. So the second part to that question, since we didn't have the service September through December, we're not going to pay back payment for that period, are we? We had the services for part of the time. Jeff, do you know the exact dates? I don't know. this matter uh, and if uh, what I think happened was we told them that we still wanted to contract with them and we were going to use our money to do it so they start they continued to work with us and finally got to the point they said we cannot continue this contract because legally we need to be under contract so that's where it stopped they, they helped us a long time without any without being funded well, there's no dollars, there's no numbers in our well, It's $6,000 worth. 6000 So what does it cost to renew the program? What, what total dollars are we looking for? 30 some thousand, I think. I guess that would be a total cost of $30,822. That's for a full year. Just a little less than 31000 30800 Mr. Chairman, that's all the questions I have. Thank you. So um, when looking at this contract, it's looking basically to settle past due services rendered yes. for roughly 7000 Correct. When you're looking at the calendar year, you're saying from January to January, would it not be behoove us to, if we're going to um, agree to this, to go ahead and move it through June 30th, 2022 to get it set up on our fiscal year. And that, in other words, the 30 something thousand would be halved. And then, then we could revisit that during the fiscal budget. Mr. Chairman, that's what I would prefer, uh, keep it in the budget cycle. And since this is coming from a special fund, the board actually has to appropriate the funds out of it as a means of transparency. Uh, so the funds are there. 
the desire for the, the services there. And there was just a little overlap or miss opportunity there to, to keep it whole and um, we're trying to rectify that now. And again, I would prefer to see that stay in the budget calendar year and that we would deal with this appropriation like we would during the regular budget approval process. Um, just just to be transparent and keep everything above board. Thank you, Ron. So and, and with any objection to that, Sheriff? Not at all. In fact, uh, we wish all of our contracts were fiscal year contracts because when you're dealing with money matters and trying to determine how much money you need to ask the commissioners for, we would love to do that all at one time. I think we've got several contracts that, that are not that way, but uh, we would like to get them all so that way. So, yes, in this case, we, we would... Uh, prefer that we go with fiscal year. Mr. Chairman, Sheriff, do we have a contract in effect today? No. Okay, and we're wanting to go to the fiscal year. What are we going to do between now and the start of the fiscal year? I think we had one contract that started when, if you approve it, from this date until the June 30th, and that would get us on a fiscal year basis. Is that correct, sir? Yeah, I believe you're, you're taking care of the lapse, plus you're going forward from now through June 30th to get you through the end of the budget year. So that contract's been signed? It will be signed? Well, that's, well, that's why we're here. They need money. I mean, they can sign anything they want to without the, the audit stamp and the, the approval. <laughs> Miss Margaret can't, can't cut her. But we do have the money. It's just getting your approval is all we need. And, we, the sheriff's office will take the money out of our drug seizure fund. Just out of curiosity, how much is in that drug seizure seizure fund? So Margaret, do you know how much we have in that fund? Yeah. And if you don't know now, I'd, I'd okay. like to get that number to further date. So don't don't worry about it, Margaret. Right now, I didn't know if you had that number handy. Any other questions or comments? All right, without objection, this item will remain on the consent agenda. Thank you, Thank sir. You, sir. And I apologize. We had our probably our first swatting call. I don't know if you're familiar with that, where somebody makes up something. Guy said he'd killed his parents. And so we, we go to that address, but it was apparently a hoax, a swatting hoax. So difficult stuff you have to deal with in today's world. Absolutely. Thank you for what you do. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. Down here, uh, seventy thousand seventy-five dollars. Thank you, Margaret. All right, we'll move on to items uh, seven: uh, tax department tax collection report for December twenty twenty-one. And I know Danny's not here today, but uh, we have uh, Kim Baker here to present. Hey, Kim. Good afternoon. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. New Year. Our tax collection report for December 2021. We have collections versus the budget. The property tax, we're at 84.5%. The delinquent taxes, we're at 67.62%. For our collections versus levy, our property tax is at 82.11%. The um, VTS system was down today and Danny was unable to get the VTS report and of course that report affects our motor vehicle tax, our current, current tax year, and our penalty and interest. And so he will get that report as soon as VTS is able to produce it. Any questions for Kim on this item? Without objection, this item will remain on the consent agenda and uh, item number eight, tax report. Department uh, release refund report for December 2021. The release refund report for December 2021, the tax system refunds and releases, report amount is $3,778.89. The rebuild amount, $2,305.51. The net release, $1,473.38. And the refund amount was zero. On the VTS, the vehicle tax system, the adjustments, the refund amount was $173.72. Any 
Any questions for Kim on this item? Without objection? Yes, yes sir. If I'm, my, that, is that a little bit lower than normal, our normal years? Are we down a little bit on the current year taxes? And I, you, you got left to collect 12, you collected 38, but you reported. I'll have to respectfully defer that question to Danny. He ran this report. I'm just delivering that report for him today. I'm sorry, but I can get that information for you, but I'll, I'll get Danny to contact you on that. Just wondering. That's good. I'm Thank sorry. You. Thank no you. Mr. Chair, I can answer for Kim and Danny if that's okay. These are really on target yes. because uh, the first week of January is their next significant week. Um, these are on target. These are normal, right where they normally are. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Without objection, this item will remain on the consent agenda. Item number nine, tax department later application for present use value forestry program. This is a request to accept the continued use application for the present use value forestry program submitted by um, Christopher Edward Conley, Beth Conley Davis, Christopher Dillon Wisnett, Alexis Hope Smith, Robert Thomas Davis, Melissa Bender Nicely, Joanne Conley Moore, and Charles Moore. If you need me to elaborate, I am happy to do so. Gentlemen, you've had a chance to review this information. Any specific questions or comments for Kim regarding this? I would agree with County Manager. I recommend approval, sir. Okay. Well, hearing none, uh, without objection, this item will remain on the consent agenda. Kim, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. All right, moving on to. Uh, items for decision. There are none today, so we'll move on to reports. Uh, gentlemen, please uh, submit your reports to uh, Madam Clerk. I would encourage everyone to adopt and foster a pet from Animal Services. Uh, as uh, we have said in the past on many times, please don't litter and uh, consider adopting a highway in 2022 as a community service project. It's a fantastic thing to do, and obviously we need that. Um, and, th that, and for more information on that, you can contact the North Carolina Department of Transportation at 828-225-2763. And I also want everyone to be aware that on county offices are going to be closed on Monday, January 17th, in observant, observance of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And any reports are going to be needed by the 10th for inclusion of the agenda packet. As far as upcoming meetings and consultation with our health director, Danny Scalise, yesterday, uh, we have decided and uh, taken Danny's advice that our regular scheduled meeting for January 18th will be held by Zoom due to COVID. We also have a February 1st free agenda meeting and then we move on to February 3rd and 4th budget planning retreat. And then our next, uh, and then February 15th, uh, a regular column meeting. Is there any other discussion items today? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Commissioner Taylor. All those in favor, state say aye. Aye. Motion carried, 5-0, Madam Clerk. Thank you, gentlemen.